On this edition of Our Lads Guide to the 2018 NFL Draft, Dan Chanka will help you prepare for the Senior Bowl game with analysis on top players participating in the game to keep an eye on for the NFL Draft, including two of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft class and many more. As Our Lads Guide to the 2018 NFL Draft with Dan Chanka on the Our Lads Football Radio Network starts now. All right, it's Friday, January 26, 2018. I'm Greg DePama, and you're listening to the Our Lads Football Radio Network, where it's never too early to think about the NFL Draft. Welcome to another season of NFL Draft Talk with Our Lads GM and National Scout Dan Shanka. And Dan, uh, I know you're back from the East-West practices and the game and had an opportunity to look at the practices at the Senior Bowl as well, the game tomorrow. So first, before we talk about the Senior Bowl, how did the East-West game go for you the whole week? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was really great. Uh, just an outstanding group of players overall. And then, uh, I mean, uh, people that saw the game uh, last Saturday, they could see how crisp things were. I mean, uh, guys flying to the ball. This is all week. We're really sharp. Of course, now with all the NFL assistants uh, running things, they're actually interviewing for future jobs too. They've got a job, but uh, you know they want to let everybody know how they can coach. So you know everything was really crisp. Um, I mean, there was no standing around. Uh, very sharp practices. Um, guys, you're they're getting the best out of the players. Um, uh, you know, all week, and uh, the players really pushed themselves and really liked um, what I saw. Uh, a tremendous amount. But the big thing is, some of the linemen, say defensive linemen, were a little bit short, uh, but they're extremely quick, which um, you know bodes well for them as an inside three technique guy, like um, you know, like PJ Hall, for instance, uh, from Sam Houston, um, who will be one of our top smaller college players that we'll mention later. But, you know, here's a guy that's super, uh, quick and, uh, and did some great things. I mean, he's just he's really a good athlete. It's hard to block, uh, Blau Nichols from, uh, Delaware is another guy. So a lot of really good football players there. The big college players, uh, like the Trey Flowers played big time, very smooth. Uh, face on the big uh, long corner from Virginia Tech was outstanding, and uh, uh, just the, I could go right down sure. the corners actually, you know what I mean, and, and talk about how, how like Dane Crookshank from uh, Arizona, for instance. Here's a guy that <clears throat> kind of he played that hybrid safety out of Arizona, but he had he had to walk out at corner and play. Uh, you know, uh, uh, just a variety of, of uh, schemes and, and uh, looks at corner out there, press, you know, off off and things like that. And he was outstanding. I mean, he, plus he's big. So, I mean, it really, um, uh, as a linebackers, Warley uh, from Ohio State, Cabinda from uh, Penn State, uh, uh, Lanning from uh, Iowa State. I mean, they, those guys, well, they'll all be, you know, playing on Sunday. So, uh, but – Right, I can go right on the, on the line, you know, just really, really pleased with how things went last week. Now, why, uh, for anybody out there that, that just wants to know the basics of it, what is what is the difference between players or why do players, get, like when you go after players uh, to sign them up for the, the East-West, I'm sure, of course, you're going after all the, all the top players that you can and you know that some are going to go to the senior bowl and they're not going to be able to go to the East West, but from the seniors bowl perspective, because it's the game after that. And we've seen guys from the East West go to the senior bowl the next week, including the Sean Hamilton we'll get to in a little bit. What is the reason like why certain players that you're able to get for the East West? Why don't we see more players from the East West quality players? Why don't we see them at the senior bowl? Well, I think um, they're, they're, uh, First of all, they, they commit, uh, you know, the Senior Bowl will commit to uh, several players, and then they usually, um, like players from East-West, will go to the Senior Bowl after the losses uh, through injury or what have you to uh, the Senior Bowl. But it's just, you know, it's just, uh, hey, it's, it's, you know, why two or three or four different teams look at one player one way and, and other teams look at them differently. And, uh, okay. you know, I think that, um, it's just, it's, it's just 
just uh, so when we see know, a guy a like Justin Jackson, process. when we see a guy like Justin Jackson, uh, you know, it, probably the top back uh, uh, in East West game, and we don't see him at the Senior Bowl. What's the reason for that? That's because the, that's because the, again, I guess it's Phil Savage putting together the players for that game doesn't believe Justin Jackson is better than the other running backs that are at the Senior Bowl. Well, uh, that could be. I mean, that that's uh, that would be because um, he, in, in my mind, although I can't speak for Phil, you know, sure. but uh, I, I think that, that um, he is. Um, you know, I think he tries to help some of the other teams. Okay. Okay. On maybe some exposure. Okay. You know, to, okay. To, like some of the small college defensive backs. Sure. He had, sure. Bringing some of those guys mm-hmm. in instead of the you know uh, like uh, power five guys and yep. stuff like that that we had. Yeah. You know, and uh, so that I, I think that that's probably part of it. And, okay. And um, but but anyway, yeah, that's it, why I wanted to make uh, sure because I know some. So I I just wanted I don't want anybody to think that it was just talent based that, that, right. Hey, if you're not in the senior bowl, then, then they don't think you're worthy of playing in that game. And they, they prefer those players over the players at the East West. And that's not always the case. No, yeah. no, it, it's, it's not. And uh, so, but anyway, it was, hey, it was quite a, uh, yeah, you it's know, always quite, fun. Well, if, and, and you know, there's again, around 15 guys that went from the East West over to the, senior bowl uh throughout the process either late you know in the process um or okay. then adding you know adding uh, from our game so okay. but anyway it was it, it, both of them are are games that you know you, you want these guys are are uh, playing in to impress people and i think that when they should play for nsl coaches you're probably going to get the best out of the players in both games, you know. You were uh, actually one of the small, speaking of small school players, one of the small school players that you mentioned on last week's show, the uh, the receiver, the kid Fountain from Northern Iowa, uh, uh, had himself a heck of a game. Yeah, and he, I tell you, he had a great week of practice, too. Uh, he's a big receiver that, uh, I mean, he's he got 34-inch arms. He's a thick guy, and... Um, uh, you know, really, he he outshone uh, um, he, he outshowed uh, uh, Deshaun Watson and or I'm sorry, Hamilton. Deshaun Hamilton yeah. in the mm-hmm. uh, practices um, where a guy like Hamilton, for instance, he you know he's an outstanding receiver, a slot receiver, and does a lot of things really well. You know, his ceiling is probably he's probably getting pretty close to it. Whereas a guy like uh, Darius Fountain. You know, it's unlimited. You know what he can do because uh, he just um, he's just taken off right now. So uh, I think that was the other thing that you know impressed the the coaches um, at, at the East West about because we had I did did have a really good group of receivers that you know once they knocked the rust off, for instance, like you know uh, we had Justin Watson from Penn. Well, he ended up going to Senior Bowl, but he had to knock really some rust off after he was with us all week because he started sure. out kind of slow and dropped some balls and this and that. But as the week went on, he, he made some really good catches and uh, he's a big receiver again. Um, you know, East West had a lot of uh, big physical type receivers that were, um, and then that's, and then plus they got work against those good corners, sure. you know, all week. So it was, um, well, that's like Hamilton, know, it, right? Deshaun Hamilton actually, uh, you know, goes from the East West to the senior bowl and everybody's been talking about him at the senior bowl this week. Right. If he's the top receiver at the senior bowl. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, uh, um, it's just, uh, I'll tell you, he, probably, he was probably getting those engines warmed up, uh, the yeah. previous week. And, uh, but, um, real happy with the, uh, group that, uh, we had, um, you know, what about uh, JT Barrett? You talked uh, highly about him at the practices. Now, unfortunately, see, for the fans that don't get to see the practices at the East West and then they go ahead and see the game, they might go, yeah, I didn't really like JT Barrett anyway. He didn't look very good, but he had a much better week of practice than, than necessarily how things went in the game. So that's why it's always very difficult for some fans that are trying to, it, 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 they can't gauge these things as easily, of course, as someone like you that, that are at the practices all week. Right, and and um, yeah, as I might have mentioned before, after practice, too, I always watch and graded all the film. You know, also uh, I not only went to all the practices and graded the guys, um, you know, during practice or made notes, but then at night I could go and watch the film by myself, and then 
take uh, copious notes, you know, of, uh, uh-huh. of those guys. And, uh, but uh, I, I really like Barrett. I mean, he's, uh, again, you know, at the right spot, uh, say later, you know, in the draft. Sure, uh, sure. I think that there's, there's something to be said for him. Um, you know, he's, he's, uh, hey, there's right now, everybody's falling all over themselves over a big, inconsistent quarterback, um, and talking about him going the first round. And, uh, so, I mean, if, if a guy, I mean, uh, Barrett, I mean, he was, um, you know, he's inconsistent at times, but, uh, he's also very, very good at times. And, uh, so, I mean, he certainly would be worth, you know, a, uh, uh, late round pick. Yeah, well, that inconsistent quarterback uh, at the Senior Bowl right now, uh, and it's not a surprise to see Josh Allen uh, as an inconsistent quarterback considering his uh, career completion percentage uh, at Wyoming. And this does include, not this past season, but in 2016 when he did have uh, all of his top receivers there. So we know what kind of a uh, a gifted uh, uh, player he could be, uh, his throwing arm and all of that. Uh, matter of fact, I was doing some research, and it just shows you how things have changed in the NFL as far as the evaluation process, too, and understanding uh, why things have changed. And then you were, of course, in the league years ago when 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 quarterbacks didn't have the high completion percentages they've had. So how difficult? So how does that change, or 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 how do you look at that? Like for instance, we talked an awful lot about if you're if you're someone like Josh Allen and you're 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 somebody that can't even get close to sixty percent completion percentage in, in college, the chances are. It's not going to do, I mean, you know, more often than not, not all the time, but more often than not, you're not going to raise your level at the next, you know, at the pro level. So I did research and, and uh, interesting enough, I was looking at some of these top quarterbacks over history. Terry Bradshaw had a career 52% completion percentage uh, at Louisiana Tech and only made it, I believe, uh, and he only had like a high of 57.7 in the NFL. Uh, John Elway was, was 57% career in college uh even though he did have one good year of 63 percent uh but it took him 11 years to do it in the nfl uh dan marino had a great year too but at Pitt he was 57 percent uh and then roger staubach was 57 percent in college and uh it took him to year five to get to just 62 percent so but the one player that uh i think people if you want people want to compare him the most to is and he even uh, loves the guy of course we've heard is brett Favre. Favre was 52% in college uh, with a high of 55%. Uh, in his first year at Green Bay, 64%. So he was able to go from 52 53% in college to 64% in his first year at Green Bay. That does not happen very often. So how? what are the differences when you take a look at a guy like Josh Allen and can compare him to a Brett Favre type and say, well, Favre did it, can Allen do it? Well, here, here's the thing now too is that uh, that back then they weren't throwing a lot to their back, yes. You know, and then yes. and also with the spread offenses, hey, they'll, they'll, they're throwing a lot of balls behind the line of scrimmage yeah. to you know the the uh, you know either the, the the what I call jailbreak screens, you know, to the wide receiver screens out there. So it's not a, a down the field throw where. It's, a lot of those guys that you quoted, the Elways and the Marinos, they're throwing that ball down the field. That's right. Okay. Okay. And then now coming into, uh, you know, talk about Allen. See, he played in a pro style offense. He did throw the ball down the field, but he also he missed, the, you know, the, the running backs because they were running the West Coast offense there. I mean, they ran the same offense there that, you know, Wentz ran at North Dakota State. And uh, they, he, he just, he missed those guys. I mean, I, Greg, I tell you, when I looked at, I looked at six films straight on him and everyone, a minute I felt a little bit of encouragement, boom, it'd be a, you know, the uh-huh. next would be a disaster. If he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, and you just can't, <clears throat> you know, somebody's going to make a mistake and draft him and everybody's going to tell all these teams, but there, there's somebody going to be stubborn enough out there saying, well, you know, we got this coach that can do this. Yeah, well, that coach is going to be fired, and the general manager is going to be fired. So now, what do you got? You know, so um, it's um, if you're counting on him to be your franchise quarterback, I think it's a big mistake. And big difference, of course, is that Brett Favre was a second round draft pick, right? And Allen is possibly could be the first pick of the draft. Could be. 
And uh, that's a big difference. And that's the reason why, like, if, J- if Josh Allen was a second-round draft pick in this year's draft. And no then, problem. Yeah, and then he comes along in a couple of years and starts in the league and develops. Nice story. Great job. Right. Excellent. But to but with all the other great talented players around him in that top five, and then you pick him, it, you are just, I mean, statistically speaking, it's just not a very smart move. No, that's exactly right. So, and, you know, like I said, I'd be all for taking him in the second round, you know what I mean? And, uh, and develop, because I think, I think he's starting to believe too much of the nonsense that goes on around, um, you know, out there. And uh, because some of the people he quoted, he talked about, none of them are quarterback experts, let me tell you. So, okay. uh, you, you know. And, um, and what do you think anyway. about, uh, and of course, also, it all depends on where he goes. Now, we talked about this before. Right. Now, now Todd Haley, you can say what you want about his, his crazy play calling at times. Uh, but yes, he did have a lot of success with Roethlisberger over the years. So, 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 and, and, and at least it's, it's, at least it's, it's not the worst coach in the world, especially with Jackson there. Hugh Jackson knows what he's doing as well. Not the worst coaching staff to go to, but still it's dysfunctional Cleveland, losing Cleveland and, 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 and going there, you just say to yourself, man, could that be the worst possible place for him to go? Whereas Brett Favre, I mean, he had, what did he have, Holmgren? I mean, come on. I mean, he had, yeah. he had one of the greatest staffs around, and that's what you have to have if you're somebody like Allen. You're going to have to have some really good teachers. Right. I, you know, I think that, um, you know, you, you, you've you got to be genuine and, and everything, and uh, I don't know if, you know, Allen uh, really is. I think that, you know, he might be um, taking – and like I said, on on what other people are saying and repeating what they say, okay. instead of being the guy to you know to to lead the charge up San Juan Hill, you know what I mean? And uh, so I, you know, you know, there. I mean, it's just amazing to me that you can have, you know, the same ten people look at this guy, and you're going to get uh, ten <laughs> different, you know. And I mean, I mean, how can you say a guy is real? you know, is throwing the ball spot on and all that and has a great day when he's throwing the ball, you know, five, ten yards over somebody's head. Yeah. Now, he, you know, he had some nice throws every, every yeah, practice, he sure. but mm-hmm. he should. But but well, you know what? When you're the first pick in the – or pretentious first pick in the draft, you darn sure better have about 90% of yours hitting, uh, you know, on and hitting the backs. And, and, hey, when I hear somebody say that he has got – um you know, a strong arm, and uh, he's got arm talent. They have lost their minds because you a strong arm. You can have hey, Jamarcus Russell had a strong arm. Oh now, yeah, where's Jamarcus Russell? You know what I mean? And um, what you have to have is arm talent. He doesn't, and, and there's a big difference between having a strong arm and arm talent. Arm talent is being able to move the platform when that rush is coming, being able to. You know, throw from overhand three quarters sidearm to make a completion and maybe to adjust on a run this just a uh, snap of the fingers. You mean you know like Baker I mean? Mayfield? Uh, yes, just like <laughs> Mayfield, is, and, and, or I call him Drew Brees Jr. You know uh-huh. what I mean? So, um, but um, yeah, yeah if, if, if people get seduced by that big, strong, you know, oh, they're looking, oh man, isn't that Allen great? And then here's you know Mayfield over there, uh, you know three inches or four inches shorter yeah. and all he does is complete passes. You That's know? why when I watch Mayfield play, it's, it's, it's so funny because it almost seems like, and, and of course you, you, you watch, uh, you watch all the film, but it, it almost seems like every time he throws the ball, he's not, he doesn't seem like his, his, his feet are planted. It always seems like he's constantly in motion. And mm-hmm. now I think that, of course, should be a good thing uh, when you're when you're consistent and on target when you're in motion. Uh, but uh, is that also something that he's going to have to work on is, you know, just need to maybe relax a little bit more in the pocket, not being so, you know, I, I got to maybe do this, do that. The other thing or is that just something that's innate in him that he just feels more comfortable in that kind of emotion and that kind of style? Well, what I do, Greg, uh, is when I'm looking and studying quarterbacks, I put my hand over the body of okay. the court, and then I look at their feet. And uh, Mayfield, he, 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 you want live feet in the pocket in regards to being able to adjust quickly. Sure. It, the yes. big thing is, yeah, looking at 
Look at how his toes are pointed, though, when he throws. I mean, it's a lot of guys that are not accurate, they'll have their feet out or splayed, you know, not pointing at their target or their shoulder won't be pointing at the target. They'll be open when they throw and yep. then the ball goes, hey, who knows where. Well, Mayfield, everything's, you know, in sync. And uh, his feet are in sync with his his upper body is tied in to his lower body and vice versa. So that's why he's so very accurate, you know, and his okay. anticipation is outstanding. So um, there, it's just a whole total package that this guy – you know, it's kind of funny because, like on Josh Allen, people say, "Well, you know, he doesn't he doesn't do this very well, and you know, he doesn't do that very well." But boy, he can throw the ball <laughs> really hard uh, and thick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Well, there's another one sitting down in Louisiana somewhere. Uh, that's kind of big and throws the ball hard if you want one guy like that, you know? Yeah, that's why I, th- I thought it was kind of funny when they did bring up Jamarcus Russell's name on one of the uh, practices. And it was like they weren't bringing his name up to slam Josh Allen, but in, in actuality, you could you could you could take it that way. Like and I don't think they, they got it. But it was like, you know, because they've been gushing a lot about Josh Allen doing this and Josh Allen. And then they brought up to Marcus Russell. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, that is uh, that that's something to remind everybody about. Just like you said, I mean, Jamarcus Russell was so good uh, at, at those practices that he became the first pick of the draft and he was a complete bust. So uh, now we're not saying that's going to happen to Allen, but uh, that's uh, but that's the way it is. I think what does help Cleveland out, and I do think this is a positive. It's nice to hear somebody say he wants to go there. So that's OK. I mean, maybe that's enough for the Browns to say, hey, if, if he wants to come here. But, you know, Dorsey, he's got a lot of decisions to make. And uh, I, I still think it's probably and I think there are other people that, that believe the same thing. I know you do that. Maybe it's better off uh, if he wants to pick up a quarterback, he'd do it a little bit later on. Uh, and uh, take some of those really talented players that uh, we'll be talking more about in the coming uh, weeks and months because some of those players were not at the Senior Bowl, uh, but uh, Mayfield and Allen were, so we know where they're at. Uh, Luke Falk, uh, Bankard, and White, those are co- those are some other quarterbacks that were there. So uh, who would be considered? Uh, Falk, I think, has been uh, pretty close to being one of the top guys after you know the, the big names. Is he still kind of right behind the big names, Falk? Yeah, I think Folk, Folk had some uh, nice practices and everything. And uh, I think with losing his teammate uh, out there, um, you know, at Washington State is a fellow quarterback. I don't know if it helped him zero in and be more focused during the week. Um, but uh, you know, he um, he had he he had some uh, really sharp throws during the week. And uh, again, you know, he's from the radar system. Just like um, Baker Mayfield, you know, they're from that the radar type thing, and um, I think that. Uh, but Folk now, you know, Folk was uh, inconsistent there at Washington State, but I thought he showed more consistency, you know, during the week. Uh, I think Mike White is a guy that's going to get drafted um, up. It's kind of what you like, uh, you know, vanilla or chocolate ice cream, I guess, if you want Folk or you want Mike White. But okay. you know, Mike White had to have he had a new you know, coordinator and things this year it took a while to get, you know, him in the new offense and get yeah. rolling. But when he did, uh, you know, Mike did a nice job. So, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll definitely be drafted and they'll okay. be on some rosters. All right. As far as the receivers now, I, I will say that a couple of these guys are two of my favorite players uh, in this, uh, in uh, this week at the senior bowl, not watching them, but going in, if I had to pick two guys, that uh, that I really like and I'd love to pick up uh, for my team in the NFL. It's uh, Michael Gallup and Alan Lazard. Uh, I, I I really like uh, uh, both of these guys, especially I think Gallup has got uh, tremendous number one possibilities, but Lazard has also been uh, a, a really under the radar uh, excellent receiver that you just know is going to both of them. You know are going to be good pros. Uh, Cedric Wilson is another kid uh, that looks like he's got a lot of talent. And we mentioned Hamilton. And then you got the uh, the Oklahoma State boys, Washington and Aitman, uh, Shark from LSU. Who do you like uh, as far as some of the uh, top receivers, uh, including Gallup and Lazard? Well, I tell you, I know why everybody likes Lazard. I mean, he's such a big target, uh, you know, a big physical type receiver. Um He's, my guess is he's probably going to go in that second round area. I think he's going to run pretty good, um, you know, and, and at, at uh, that, you know, his size. 
And, uh, you know, Aitman is another guy from Oklahoma State that's a big receiver that's very similar okay. uh, to that. Um, but, you know, it, it, and I, I know he, he was short, and we had him actually in our newsletter as 5'107", 207. He was our top receiver, uh, you know, at, at, in the, at this point. But James Washington is uh, – Hey, he's a very talented guy, and uh, he's built like a running back when he catches the ball. I mean, he, you know, but he tracks the ball very well. Okay. Um, and and so you know, he's a guy that um, you know that I really like. I would have liked to see Anthony Miller there, but he was uh, you know in- injured uh, and he couldn't make it. But but Alan Lazard again, he's a good gallop that runs really good routes. He just has to refine a few things, uh, but he, again, he's a guy that um, you know, good receiver. But Lazard, uh, you know, it, again, it, he's probably more of a vertical guy, but he can run the three level routes. He'll run that slant. You know, a West Coast type offenses will like him because he's big on when he he, he runs a slant. He can screen defenders off. You know, he can run the big routes and then he can go deep and uh, you know, he tracks the ball very well. Uh, what does Gallup have to do uh, to improve his game? Because it's not like there's a bona fide, easy lock number one stud receiver in this class. There's 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 some guys that, I mean, who knows? We're going to find out in the next uh, couple of months who's going to be the number one. Um, well, what are Gallup's chances of being number one? What does he have to do to be that guy? Well, run. Okay. You know, it, I tell you what, I, I and I, I I know I always hate to say this, but uh, you know. Because it's going to things are going to change dramatically at, in the secondary and the wide receivers, and it just hey, what they run at the combine, what kind of verified forty can these guys run? And uh, you know, a lot of these guys in both sides of the ball here with the corners and the wide receivers, they're really good football players. I mean, they're really good players. But you know, the way they're going to get sorted out is how fast they can run. Now, Christian Kirk. From uh, Texas A&M, he's supposed to, you know, he's a track guy that can fly. So he's going to be in the mix for somebody somewhere. Yeah. Uh, any of those guys that can really run, and if Gallup can uh, turn the Jets on and say he runs uh, low four fours, you know, you can kind of push him up. But the, the way it's going to be, and, and, and here's the other thing, Greg, the bigger you are, theoretically, the slower you can run and still be in the mix, yeah. you know, and uh you know, when I say slower, you know, we're talking sure. tenths or hundreds of seconds. But, you know, um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of people that are going to be competing to try to squeeze into that first round. All right. And uh, sticking at the receivers, but moving on to tight end, uh, there are some good tight ends. Uh, you've got Fumagalli uh, and Jacecki have got to be two of the top tight ends, a couple of Big Ten tight ends. Uh, and, uh, and, and another tight end is kid Tyler Conklin is a, an interesting tight end. I know he had some injury issues earlier this year at central Michigan, but, uh, is it Fumagalli and Jacecki? Are those the top two guys in this game? Oh, uh, in this game? Uh, yeah, I, well, <clears throat> because Godert got hurt, you know, after the first day, but the first day he was looking really good, you know? So I, I, I think that, uh, Godert would probably be the top, you know, tight end, uh, and then you have to go Jacecki. Now, Fumagalli is not nearly the athlete those other two are. Okay. Um, you know, and, uh, he, 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 you know, he, he can't separate really from linebackers and things like that. Whereas Jacecki can, can, uh, you know, separate as can Goder because they're both just bigger and, and, um, you know, longer arms and better athletes and all that stuff. So, okay. Now, Goder was only there that first day. And he's had a hamstring problem really since um you know the playoffs this year and uh, uh when they're in the <clears throat> fcs playoffs so okay but his first day he looked he looked pretty good so that's uh, that's how i'd see those top so three. you still feel confident that when it's all said and done that uh i mean do you think goaded will be number one over uh in it, or, or what about mark andrews well andrews is going to be in the I mean, it, there's going to be a battle there because i'll tell you Another guy who didn't play, and you know, he's not going to run any better because he got injured. But Chris Herndon from Miami yeah. is really a good tight end, you okay. know. And uh, I think Hayden, you know, Hayden Hurst is he's an older guy, you know, former baseball player and all that. So he's probably going to slide just a little bit. Um, uh, unless somebody says, Hey, we have this guy five years and you know, he's 30 years old, that's fine, and, uh-huh. and this and that. But but so he's going to be in the mix, but. 
Gusecki's going to be, Godert's going to be there, Andrews is going to be there. Okay. And, you know, Ian Thomas is uh, is a good athlete, but he's got stuff to learn. Um, you know, Dalton Schultz from uh, Stanford mm-hmm. sure. threw his hat in the ring. He's coming out. So, it's again, it's going to take something to – and usually – when you separate from each other, something's got to, you got to do something special. And usually if you got the size, you got the, you know, uh, and arm length and all that stuff, then it comes down to speed and, and, be, and, the, and the ability to separate. All right. Now running back, uh, Rashad Penny, uh, <clears throat> we would think, uh, w- would be the top guy, uh, this week. Uh, of course he had a great career at San Diego state. He's got return ability. Uh, of course he's got better size, uh, than Pumphrey, who, uh, was the talk of the program last year. And then Jalen Samuels is another player that we've talked a lot about this season, fullback, tight end, H back. I mean, this guy can play all over the place. Uh, is going to be a very intriguing uh, player as well. Wadley's had a good week uh, from uh, from your area uh, at Iowa. Iowa. And uh, another guy that I think is uh, going to be a really good player in the NFL as a situational receiver, third down back type guy is Ito Smith. Oh, yeah. No, I tell you what, I, I like him. And uh, I think um, he, he kind of – it reminded me a little bit of the uh, McGuire kid that went to the Jets, you okay. know, and okay. uh, because McGuire was really hot stuff, you know, when he came out uh, a year ago, and Jets, I think, took his sixth round, and, yeah. you know, he's a good, um, <clears throat> and Ito is uh, a guy that um, is going to be right in there. They may take him a little earlier because maybe he'll run a little faster. I don't know, but uh, it, he's in that mix. He, he'll be a really good third down back, and, uh, He's got really good lateral quickness and vision, and uh, so he's going to be in the mix. I, um, we got him, I don't know, in the middle group of our, I think we got 60 running backs or something like that, or I don't know, 50, I think, that we posted right now, and uh, we got him kind of right in the middle of that group. Okay. Uh, as far as the linemen, uh, there are some good linemen here, of course. Uh, the, the one guy that I I kind of like, and, and I know he's been at the top of your charts uh, most of the years, the uh, UTEP kid, uh, Will Hernandez. I know he's not a tackle. I get that. And I know the Notre Dame uh, guard is going to go pretty high. Uh, but as far as this game, uh, this week, uh, Hernandez, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you're looking for a, a guard uh, in the NFL draft, so I, don't, I don't know. You can go wrong there. So, And then you got some other linemen as well. Uh, I know Wins had a nice week from Georgia. You got O'Neill from Pitt, Cos- uh, Crosby from Oregon, Mason Cole from uh, Michigan, and so forth. So, uh, wh- who do you like in this group? Well, the thing is, it, I think it's going to be scheme specific. Like uh, Hernandez, I don't think he's going to be a real good zone blocking guard. Sure, but he's going to be a good man blocking. You know, a team that's a man blocking, uh, he's going to be really good. They're, he's going to be highly sought after for those man blocking teams. Um, uh, in regard to, because of its footwork, you know, and his build and things like that, I think it's, he's going to struggle in, in blocking, uh, zone and reaching and okay. maybe, uh, you know, getting to that second level and things like that, you know, more so than a guy that's a little more streamlined, but manned up, man, I tell you what, he's a, he can be a bulldozer. And, um, so I think he's going to be in that, you know, in that mix, uh, somewhere, um, I thought the Corbett kid showed some things, um, you know, I, uh, um, I, but, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, cause the tackles, you know, I think O'Neill is going to be in there. Crosby is, is another one that's, uh, well thought of. I you know, see the guys, some of the guys at the top, like, uh, Connor Williams, he's he was nicked up and, um, you know, he, he didn't play obviously in the, the senior bowl or anything, but you know, he's a guy that's, uh, we, I tell you, before he got nicked up, we really, really liked him. And then, uh, so we'll just have to see what happens there. But, uh, another guy that we, now one of my favorite linemen was Jamarco Jones and he ended up not playing, you know, in the East West, uh, for whatever reason, but man alive, that kid is really good and he's going to be a guard. And I think he's going to be, you know, one of the top three guards probably drafted. And uh, Orlando Brown coming out, right? Yes. Yeah. Orlando Brown's coming out. And the thing about him is, you know, you want to see him finish. You know, that's that's the big thing. Well, this guy finishes blocks. I mean, initially, you know, he's okay. He walls people off and he can run them up the field and stuff like that because, I mean, he is so big. 
Um, but you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't strike me like a Luan, uh, or, or the Matthews and, you know, okay. some of those guys that I like came out the last few years, but he is a good football player and he may go in the top 15. I know why he would go in the top 15 because there's hardly any tackles out there this year. <laughs> All right. And, um, so, uh, and, and he's big, he's long and, you know, every coach out there thinks it can make him an all pro because he's got all the raw skills. He's got nastiness to him, but I don't know. I just like to see guys finish blocks, you know. And what happened to Mike McGlinchey? Well, he he's always been what. Well, he is what he is. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, he just uh, he, he he's a guy that um, is um, he's going to be a good right tackle, starting right tackle in the league. I think that Jerron Christian uh, from Louisville may be passing people up, too. He's one of those guys who came out late that everybody's going to be uh, scrambling for film and, and doing that stuff. But okay. he's a guy that I think people are going to be talking about. We actually put him ahead of Orlando Brown oh. um, in, in, when we uh, did our, our quick stacks uh, okay. here right before the newsletter. So, okay. Um, but, but there, I mean, and then Brian O'Neill, you know, I mean, he's a big kid for it, but, you know, the pit lineman last year ended up not doing anything, you know, uh, from a year ago. Remember Bishwati yeah. went up to the Giants yep. and then uh, the big guard that went out to Arizona and he had uh, some kind of physical ailment that, you know, was supposed to be okay play. Well, you know, that was so, I, you know, those pit linemen are really going to be investigated, I think, see what happens there. But, but I know a lot of people like O'Neill. All right, let's go to the defensive side, and uh, there are some uh, good players here. Now, uh, the, the the player that seems to really have taken off this year is the kid from Texas San Antonio, Marcus Davenport. Uh, of course, the Sean Hand uh, is another uh, defensive end out of Alabama. Uh, so you got both of those guys on the South squad. Uh, and then you got a couple of the Ohio State kids on the North squad, Holmes and Lewis. You got the uh, Oko Ronquo kid from Oklahoma. So starting outside with the defensive ends, uh, is Davenport Hand? Uh, h- how do you separate those two guys? Are those two of the top guys? Yeah, I think it's at this game about Davin- Yeah, well, see, Davenport is he's so long, but the thing that he did a lot there at, at um, you know. Uh, for the road runners uh, is he, he stood up to rush and you don't have as good a jump on the rush when you're standing up. Now he had his hand down during the week. They wanted to get in, but he also played up okay. and um, you know, he, 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 he's got a lot of talent. He doesn't always finish the tackle and things like that. Like he'll pressure that side. Then somebody come the other way and make the play. And then he'll just kind of slow down. But, I mean, you know, I know our scouts that uh, were watching the defensive line and stuff this year, this last week, uh, really liked him, and um, and I studied him uh, extensively uh, out there at uh, you know San Antonio, and uh, he's got all the raw ability. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to squeeze him up where a lot of people are putting him, but um, you know, I, I you know he's got a lot of raw talent, and uh, he was very productive in a weak league, and uh, so you know I think it'd be a big game for him tomorrow. See how he does. Where is he going to play at the next level, though? I mean, is that is he? Is, you said that he's played a lot um, uh, on the line of scrimmage this week, but is he? Because everybody's always looking, especially with these three, four outside. Uh, teams are always looking for the outside pass rusher. Is is that something where teams, if they're looking for that type of player, they're going to look at Davenport? Yeah, yeah, that that's going to have you know they can wide him out. I don't. I'm not going to say Ziggy Ansah, you know, that type of uh, talent or anything um, right now. But uh, you know, I like to see what happens tomorrow and um, see okay. how he produces there. But uh, and then hand. Hey, um, you know, he's a guy that's probably going to be a second, third round guy. Um, and, uh, of course, the, the, the big stud is, is his teammate, uh, who was a junior, you know, and, uh, I think that, um, or, you know, who played, uh, uh like LeBron Payne, you know, his teammate was the, was yeah, the guy. And then, yeah. but, but, but a guy that we had, uh, rated second as a defense attack, I mean, can you imagine leading your team in tackles over a hundred tackles? And the last guy I saw do that was 
was uh, uh, Indomicon Sioux, and uh, but and Phillips is not Sioux, but Phillips is a terrific football player, and uh, yep, I would expect um, you know he's going to be a first round guy, and uh, really like him in the interior. Um, you know, uh, let's now Kyle Williams from Buffalo, for instance, wasn't a first round guy. He was in the fifth or sixth or fourth or something, but what a great player for years for Buffalo. And I think that's what you're looking at for Phillips. Phillips is probably going to go in the first and going to be a terrific football player for somebody. Uh, what I mean, will it uh, hurt um, Phillips at all based on, I know uh, his teammate uh, Solomon Thomas last year uh, didn't have a really good year so far, you know, this year. Uh, that's not saying he won't turn out to be a good player, but – uh, does that concern anybody when they're taking talking about Stanford players? Because uh, Thomas, I mean, wow, well, he he was uh, lots expected out of him, right? And, it, and again, it's it's kind of where and how you play the guys, you know. And now they had, you know, look at those two big guys like Buckner and Armstead. They had out at uh, you know out there, yeah, out at uh, San Francisco. And I think that you know Thomas depend on you know how you can move him around and, and think, I think that they're still probably searching a little bit uh, to see, you know, where how he, he uh, yeah. you know, where he fits in the defensive scheme, but it's there. But now Phillips, um, you know, I think that he stands by himself. You know, I think when you evaluate these guys, although you can say sometimes like, you know, I say, well, how many Nebraska offensive linemen they put out or how many Texas offensive linemen have ever really played, you know, things like that. I don't think that's, the point yet with Stanford, I think that uh, right. you know, Phillips is going to be a guy to come in and, and uh, really help somebody. Another defensive tackles there. You got the North Carolina State kids, Justin Jones and BJ Hill. You've got Andrew Brown, who didn't have uh, the uh, college career that many thought he was going to have, but still an intriguing player. Puna Ford from Texas, uh, uh, and uh, also look at tour from LSU. Uh, some other players that will be. Uh, uh, you know, keep an eye on as far as the interior of the defensive line. Uh, any, any, any of those other guys that you like? I know Ford's intriguing. Yeah, well, Ford we had at the East West, and uh, he was uh, really one of four up front that uh, were, were really pretty good. But PJ Hall was an explosive, uh, quick guy, um, and then uh, Nichols from uh, Delaware, who was at the East West, was another one of those guys, and that. Uh, James Looney from uh, Cal was like that. So there's four super quick. Guys. And the ironic thing, we're going to talk briefly, I guess, about uh, the small college guys here in a minute. But um, but Jake Osorgi from uh, South Dakota State was about the only one that could block those guys. Okay. I mean, he, he would leverage them, get his hands inside of them, and he could turn them. And, I mean, uh, Puna Ford, he, he could dominate Puna. Uh, uh, and uh, so it was uh, – you know, and in Hall too. I mean, Hall was is really, really good and really, really quick. But I tell you what, Sorge, uh locked on and um, did a job against him. So you know, it, it's uh, it, during the week in practice. Sure. You sure. know, and uh, so it was. Uh, but there, but those all those guys would be playing uh, on Sunday and rotate uh, up front with somebody. So okay, um, there's a bunch of good ones there at linebacker. Uh, I guess the one linebacker that has stood out uh, for a couple of reasons uh, is uh, the kid uh, uh, Shaq Griffin uh, from Central Florida. Of course, he doesn't have the left hand. Uh, he's actually their uh, practice player of the week. So how difficult is it going to be for like when, when you're taking a look at a kid like this that does not have a left hand? You know what? How is that going to value? How do you evaluate a guy like that as far as his draft stock on what you think he won't be able to do for you? Well, you know, that's the thing. I mean, uh, you hear you hear uh, teams talking about, well, this linebacker's arms are too short or, you know, he doesn't have hand strength yeah. or he doesn't have this. Um, I, it's going to have to, I think whoever drafts uh, Griffin is going to have to have a plan in mind for him because I think he'll be a great special team player and everything. Yep, yep. And um, and it just kind of depends on what you ask him to do. And I think you'll have a plan before you draft him. Um, and because he is a terrific football player, you know, and uh, um, and then, you know, you just have to because everybody looks for the reason the guys can't play. And with him, you better look for a reason why he can play because he can play. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, it it. You know, the way he wraps it, now he'll cut block, 
uh, at times instead of always wrapping up and things like that. But he gets them down because he is a, he's a very explosive football player. And, um, you know, I, it wouldn't shock me, though, if he ends up in Seattle, you know, and, and draft some way with his brother up there. And, um, and, and the way that, you know, Seattle likes to do some things on defense. Okay. I mean, this guy can blitz. You know, he comes off the edge. He come up the middle. I mean, he's disruptive. Um, you know, there, if you didn't know that he didn't have a hand, uh, sure. you know, a left hand, you, you, you know, you wouldn't realize, you, you, you know, he's such a great player. So, uh, if you didn't know that already going in, you know, so, but somebody have a game plan for him. And, uh, but like I said, okay. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Say for instance, you know, he has a problem with, um, uh, grabbing and, 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 you know, locking up and, and uh, on people. Hey, he, there's nothing wrong with being a great core special team player. No, you not know, at all. cause Hey, Hey, Matt Slater, uh, at, um, I think it's Matt isn't up at the new England. That's what Slater yes. does. He returns yeah. kickoffs and covers. Totally and does. Stuff and he's been all pro and all that stuff and made a lot of money. That's there. right. So, you, there, there's a place for, uh, uh, Shaquem. Was there any other uh, linebackers uh, that we should be keeping an eye on? I know McCray from Michigan. Uh, I know he had a very inconsistent season, uh, but he has talent. Trey Williams had a huge, uh, uh, nice little play earlier in the week uh, in the game. Uh, he had a nice season for Auburn. They had that great defense. Uh, Nwosu from USC. Any other linebackers to keep an eye on? Yeah, well, you said the last one there, Nwosu. Uh, I, I... I think he's really going to be a guy that, uh, you know, people are going to keep an eye on for tomorrow. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, the guys, uh, you know, Warner, um, I've got to see who's up to date, see who's still uh, playing tomorrow because man alive, there's been guys, uh, banged up and stuff all week. And, uh, but, uh, my guy to keep an eye on would be Nwasu. And then, uh, you know, if McCray, is playing McCray is a very talented guy. Uh, so just a matter of how he steps up and, uh, and responds to the chance tomorrow. And then, uh, Ture from Rutgers. Yeah. Um, he's another guy that, uh, is, is, you know, your edge type rusher. Um, got to work on some pass drops and things like that, but, uh, he's certainly a guy that you want to keep an eye on. All right, and then uh, in the secondary, uh, not a not a lot of big time. I remember last year uh, we were talking about some of these guys, and of course the one guy that we talked very highly of that did not make it to the game last year was Tre Davis White, and uh, he wound up having a tremendous rookie season, of course, and uh, and and he was drafted uh, late in the first round, uh, but we're not getting any of those guys this year at corner. Uh, in this game, uh, it's, uh, meanwhile, at safety, you've got Watts is an intriguing player. Of course, Blanding for Virginia, Virginia is intriguing. Uh, wh- what about uh, the small school corner, uh, Saran Neal from Jacksonville State? Is he somebody to watch? Yes, uh, he really is. Now, here's the thing. They played him both uh, at corner and safety in school uh, okay. there at Jacksonville State. And um, I I see him being maybe a nickel type, uh, safety corner, uh, hybrid, uh, you know, that kind of guy. Okay. Um, he's a very talented guy cause he can make plays. Uh, he's got, you know, he, he's really smooth with his footwork and everything. And, um, he, at that level, his mirror and cuts really well. So, you know, I, I think he's a guy that, um, again, how you want to use him in your scheme. But I'm not so sure he's not going to be a better safety than a corner. Might stick him up there at press, you know, because he is strong. He's, he understands zone and stuff like that. But I think, you know, uh, he, he probably be a nickel type safety or a box safety because, uh, he's got good tackling ability and he can take on people. So, um, I don't, you know, I don't think you're going to walk him out there and say, Hey, you know, you're our guy out, out there, uh, lock him up man to man. Yeah, on an and island, sure. And all that. Yeah. No, he's not that guy. No. But he is a good football player that I think that, um, I'm trying to think, uh, and I can't remember his name right now. And I can't believe it, but, but they got a guy like him in Atlanta, Brook, Brookings, or, um, um, but, but he was with us actually at the East West game and, uh, from Florida. You know, the, he didn't get drafted or anything, but 
he starts for uh, Atlanta, but he reminds me of of uh, Neil. So, um, uh, but it had come to me in a minute. I got new. I got new players in my brain right now. You're not so, talking about the Ishmael kid, are you? No, 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 no. Um, it's it's uh, it's Brookings. Brookings. Um, uh, Brookings. Brookings. Um, okay. Interesting. And he's a DB. Oh, God, he's a defensive yeah. back for Atlanta. Yeah, he's a defensive back that came out. In fact, he played with us at the East West. Well, and uh, that's you're not. Well, and you're not talking about Demonte KZ either, are you? No. Okay. No, I'm, no, no. Oh, no, no. I, I don't want to confuse you now. I, I'm talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian Poole. Oh, Brian okay, Poole. Brian Poole. Okay, From yeah, he Atlanta. wasn't even drafted, yeah, right? He wasn't even drafted. He didn't get drafted yeah. or anything. He starts. I'm sorry. I don't like that. I don't want to have well, you got, in my you mind. Know. But no, it's Poole, <laughs> Brian Poole. Yeah, Brian played with us at East West and goes and yeah. uh, and but but so that's who Neil reminds me of. Okay, Poole. okay. So, um, okay. now uh, sticking with the small schools, then where Neil, of course, is it from an FCS FCS program? There's a lot of players. Uh, that's what we talked about from the very beginning of the show about a lot of these uh, kids are getting a shot from FCS schools. Uh, we've got the we got the corner Michael Joseph from a Division three school. We've got Alex Kappa from Division two, the offensive tackle, uh, and then of course a whole bunch of FCS kids. So uh, besides Neil, uh, who sticks out for you as uh, the type of uh, players that we should be keeping an eye on? Some sleepers that are not uh, FBS players. Well, are you talking about in the in the Senior Bowl? Or in the overall? Senior Bowl, just in the Senior Bowl in this week's game. Uh, well, you know, I think the thing you want to look at is uh, now it's a little bit of uh, ahead of him right now, and he's got ways to catch up. But you know, Michael Joseph, the corner out of yep, Duke, yep. I mean, he's kind of flashed. Uh, Shandron Sullivan from Georgia State got better, you know, through the week. Danny Johnson can really run, um, and uh, from Southern, and he's uh, you know shown some flashes. And, and things like that uh, this week, um, you know, in, in the uh, secondary and everything. Um, but again, I think those guys are, you know, a long way away from uh, helping uh, immediately. But they've got they've shown some talent, you okay. know what I mean? And uh, so I think that uh, those three in the secondary um, are probably guys, you know, I, I didn't think Wade from Murray State did much uh, this week to, Say hey, you know I'm an NFL guy. It's going to get drafted and, and things like that. I, I question his speed, um, but you know he played in the game, so I I think that um, but those those secondary people there, uh, I think are, are guys that um, um, you know you have you have to uh, uh, at least look at for the small college guy. Would Neil uh, be at near the? Would he be like the top guy uh, that's yeah. playing this week? Oh yeah, oh yeah, in, in the secondary, yeah. certainly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he he would be. No, Neil's a, a trip. Like I said, he's one of those. You know, I don't want to call him a um, poor poor man, Minka Fitzpatrick, because Fitzpatrick sure. play everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and then they're they're not in the same ballpark. But but Neil is, you know, he's a guy that's going to play special teams, and like I said, play the play uh, nickel corner or, or in nickel. He can play nickel safety. You know, he can play corner and get him out there and press. He, I mean, he can do different things for you, which makes him valuable. All right. And uh, what's up next? Because we've got the combine after the senior bowl. Uh, the, you know, we still have some time for the combine. How much? Uh, how, how many more uh, weeks we got for the combine? Well, the combine will, is, uh, you know, going to be moving along in um, late February. Late or, February, or, yeah. Uh, yeah, so because you know you got the Super Bowl and everything, and then you know we're looking at uh, what I think the twenty seventh of February for the yeah. combine, and that's uh, that's so, it, right? So nobody's going to have anything yeah. else going on before that, right? So it's uh, nope combine, and then it really gets busy because then you're going to be taking all that information because, as you've said many times, once you start getting those clock times, uh, especially from the uh, receivers and the DBs, then then you'll then you then you kind of then that's it then you kind of can uh then, then the distractions of having to worry about any other bits of information are behind you and and then it's right. just then it's the war room right it's a submarine for about a month yep it's in the submarine you got it and uh then you don't even peek up anymore because you gotta 
hunker down and uh, consolidate all your reports and look over things, say, hey, what, what, you know, we like here and there. So, yeah. And then uh, next up for everybody, a newsletter. When's the next newsletter coming out? Yeah, that, I tell you what, we want to get that to printer a week from Monday with the uh, East West uh, Shrine, and then the uh, it, that's a whole newsletter, and then the Senior Bowl is a whole newsletter. Then we mail those out together. All right, Dan, uh, I'm sure you want to get caught up on uh, you just returned uh, from being away for almost a couple of weeks. So uh, we'll talk to you again uh, definitely in uh, the next week or two. We look forward to talking to you just about every week all the way through the draft. Great, Greg. Great being with you. Thanks a million. Thanks, Dan. That's Dan Shanka. And uh, Dan, of course, will be with us. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to hook him up again next week because uh, I think this is, uh, as I've said before, once we got this uh, puppy started last week, uh, we're going to try to get a show in every week all the way through to the draft. Uh, we've got a lot lined up. Of course, the Combine's the next big thing to break down, but we're still going to have a lot to talk about before that, uh, and that includes breaking down the positions, We'll have, uh, we're have. we going to wait until after the Combine uh, to do any of our mock drafts. So we still have a long way to go before we get involved with any of that stuff. Uh, but a lot to uh, digest here uh, all the way through to the draft, and that's why we want you to make sure that you check back with us as often as possible, either on this show, on this network, or, of course, on the website at rlads.com. Don't forget to order your subscription of your, uh, of your choosing at rlads.com, including the rlads NFL Draft Guide coming to a mailbox by you. And thanks for tuning in to the Our Lads Football Radio Network. We'll see you next time.